Welcome to The Law Simplified. I'm Shavin Bandar Naika. Today, once again, we have a very special guest with us. We have Tatiana Gillen, uh, who's achieved a first-class LLB from the University of London. And to add to that, she's someone who's actually working and who has work experience as well. So there's much insight that we can get from her. Um, first and foremost, uh, Tatiana, congratulations on your achievement. Job well done. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank um, you. It's not easy getting a first class in a law degree and almost now on impossible to do so with the University of London. Um, so today we have a couple of questions that we want to ask you as well. And there's well, much and that there's you can, much that um, you can actually uh, provide to um, our students and the audience as well. Um, but before we proceed, the very first thing, I think, just so that everyone is on board, um, tell us a little bit about you about your journey towards the LLB and what made you pursue a career in law and where you are at right now uh, in terms of your career as well. Mm -hmm. I started an LLB degree four years ago and by that time I had been practicing the law in Russia for more than for 10 years. Uh, so I had an experience, uh, quite big experience and I reached that stage, stage where, when I wanted to broaden my knowledge and to, to have a deeper knowledge of English law because it is usually used in international deals. Mm. So I decided to, to start this path to enroll uh, an LLB program. And um, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't say that when I, I first chose this career, this path in Russia, I totally understand what it is to be a lawyer. I was, I was, I had some romantic image of a lawyer from movies, <laughs> from books, uh, and I didn't really know how it is. Right. But when I started my LLB degree, I had this impression and I wanted to move on to, to have something else. Okay, yes. so I, I think I think there's there's a lot of insight just in that itself. So I mean, you you you're coming into the LLB um, whilst being employed, not only just employed, you're actually in the field as well. So you're in the fraternity. You you know exactly what goes into law as well, and you want to supplement your knowledge since the University of London and the LLB program, be it any university, has an international reach as well. Um, when you say that, though, what what is it that you wanted to leverage on? Where is it that you want to take this from this point onwards in terms of your career and academics? When I started the degree, this degree, this program, I thought that I could be quite a unique specialist in Russia because we have international law firms, but I was an in-house lawyer mm. and not many in-house lawyers have, have this knowledge. So I thought it can bring me somewhere else to an upper level, to, to be near, to, 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 uh, to make a, a unique specialist from me. But I didn't exclude the possibility to move to an international company or even maybe to try myself in another country. But at that time, it wasn't my first priority. Okay. Um, you said that you've, you've been in this field also for quite some time and this is almost a stepping stone to something else. Um, for those of our audience who are actually, you know, coming on to this um, degree as freshers, let's say, as just students who are interested in the law as well, um, we'll touch on this a bit later. But at this juncture, was there any specific reason besi besides the romantic allure of law? Was there any particular person maybe that inspired you to get into this field? No, actually, no. When I started, it was so complicated times in Russia. It was, you know, everything changed here. We, we, uh, we, uh, the USSR collapsed and it was the end of 90s and it was a difficult economic situation and it was quite a new profession here. I think I was excited by, by because it was really something new, uh, which wasn't very, very popular in, in the Soviet times. And at that time, I really didn't understand how it could be. Uh, <laughs> I didn't understand that it could be pretty tough sometimes. And uh, just 
for those who, who start their career, I want to warn you that it is normal at some time to feel doubts that to, to feel, you know, some that you reach some top and maybe it's not what you wanted. <laughs> but just try to look try to look at it from different perspectives, from different angles. Lore can offer you a lot because there are a lot of fields, a lot of a lot of paths, academic path path. You can practice a lore as a practitioner. So just don't stop and look at it from different angles. Brilliant. I, I think I think that gives a good outline of who you are. And we have, you know, we have a varied um, number of audience members. Actually, we have people who are just um, thinking of doing law. They haven't even started it. They just want to see if it's something that they'll be interested in. We have those who are doing law at the moment and you know, thinking, where should I go from here? And those who are just coming out who want a pupillage, who wants to, you know, get into the field. So I, I think you've outlined it quite, quite vividly. Um, to get into the nitty gritties, however, to sort of, you know, have a consideration of um, uh, what exactly that went into your process and you not just passing, but also acing your law examinations. Um, first and foremost, since you were working as well, what, were, what was your schedule like? You know, how many hours did you put in? How did you manage your time and so on? Yes, I was, um, yeah, it was, it was pretty tough to combine and I started every day. I spent at least two, from two to four hours every day to study. I did it after work. And I, I should say that I work at least nine hours in the office, but most likely 10, 11. And after that, I came home and started doing the second job. And all my weekends were basically um, basically busy by these studies too because this is a very challenging and complicated degree and you have a lot a lot to read and to memorize and to make notes and so it, it was pretty tough yes and, and you know my position at my work it was quite um, quite high at that time so after two years of of this root of this schedule I was really exhausted and I rearranged a bit uh, my work I asked to a more flexible schedule mm. so, uh, so you yeah. had to just just uh, just um, to outline you you had to also work around your work so to speak since you were putting about um, two to four hours and then your work weekends were most likely into this as well um, just to sort of continue on that trend of thought as well from everything that you've been provided by the university, apart from that, um, what other resources did you find uh, most useful to aid you in you know, formulating your answers, understanding concepts perhaps, and so on? Yes, um, first of all, I was supported by a local university in Russia, and we have tutors here. They were mostly useful for the first year when you really don't understand how to write your exam questions, how you should uh, present your arguments. So for the first year, it was really vital. As for additional resources, I can say don't try to cover all resources the university recommends you mm. because Try to concentrate on the subject guide and, of course, textbooks. Textbooks are vital. Uh, I would recommend to read, if you don't understand anything in a textbook, read it as many times as you need to understand it. And if you still don't understand it, just try to go online and just Google it. Google some cases, some case summaries, because many, especially if it is recent cases, many law firms... Uh, provide case summaries on their websites, mm. and it is it is it is practicing lawyers. They know what they do, and sometimes it's brilliant. Right. It helps you to understand the things. As for all additional materials and uh, many many articles, many additional textbooks, um, it's 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 very it's very difficult to understand what you you should choose. Just don't try to cover everything. Choose what you need. If you decide to, that you, will, you are going to answer a particular topic uh, in your exam, then 
try to read something in, in this area, but it, it must be, it must be, you should be really selective in that. So re, yeah, I read some articles, Oxbridge notes that I can recommend. It's the notes um, from uh, previous LB students from the top uh, in English universities. And on some subject, Oxbridge notes, which I bought from their website, were, were quite useful. On EU law and on um, uh, tort law, they were quite useful. Yes, the, this, this one I can recommend too. So now in terms of the resources and material, you, you specified and you looked at a number of them. But in terms of you know, that material, the, the material and the resources can only take you so far, right? You have students who can utilize that and maybe a pass, maybe a fail to a pass, a pass to a um, second lower, second lower to a upper and so on. But what would you consider as like one of the fundamental things that assisted you to not just pass, but ACE your exam? What's that, what's that main thing um, that helped you? I think the main thing is discipline. You really, you can't do, you know, in Russia, uh, the, law, uh, the law program works differently. We don't have this case law things. We have kind of more like German system of law, uh, Roman system of law. So uh, students here, they're used to, uh, they're used to the situation when in a month, before the exam, they start, start st studying, <laughs> learning things. It's impossible. Forget about that. If you don't do your your your, your studying, reading, uh, uh, memorizing from the very start, <laughs> you won't succeed. Right. And you should repeat things because when you memorize things, in a week you you read these cases and you can't remember the name. It's just oh my god, I remembered it. A week ago, but I, it's it's all all like I I see it for the first time, but then you repeat it, then you repeat it in in a week, then in a month, and by the end you have a clear picture in your head. It's just like like an alphabet in your head after that. Okay, so I th I think I think that's that's good insight as well. Um, that y that you need to have discipline and you need to be committed. And the fact that, you know, you need to organize yourself as such, don't ever leave anything uh, to the last minute, which is, which yeah, is what nine out of 10 times what students usually do. Um, perfect. I, th I think that, that sort of rounds up exactly what in terms of your academics, how you've, you know, how you've encapsulated it. Um, one major problem, though, in terms of what students find difficult is they understand the subject matter. Um, they've gone through the resources. They know the law. But where most students fail or most students fail to accomplish the grade they want is when they try to put pen to paper in tackling their questions. Um, any advice that you can give to potential students right now who are preparing for exams even on how you tackled questions and what you found useful? Mm -hmm. First of all, I, I know that almost every, every student would advise that try to write the questions at home before your exams just to fill the time because when i started the degree i thought it is impossible to write uh, four questions in three hours mm. but when i do did my exams when i took my exams i realized that even for 10 minutes you could write a lot 10 minutes it's it's so one third of your question sometime it's a lot then when you see your exam paper, uh, spend two, three minutes to scheme through it just to, to understand uh, the topics of, uh, of each question and to choose the, question, the questions you're going to answer. And follow your time. Don't spend more than 45 minutes as it was in our case. We had three hours for, um, for questions. Don't spend more than 45 minutes for one question. Just the vital thing uh, at my exams, it was a good pencil, <laughs> a good pencil and a watch. <laughs> watch, watch it because uh, you need to follow the time. You need to see, um, uh, you need to, to be sure that, do, don't, if you feel that 
um, you don't have time um, to cover in detail every mm. issue. Just m briefly mention it, mm. briefly mention the case and go to the next one. Because sometimes in problem questions, there are so many issues that you can't, you, you may know everything about them, but you can't, you don't have time to cover them in, in detail. That's true. I think that that's the whole whole premise as well, right? It's it's about timing and um, practice exactly. makes perfect. Just just before the examination, you know, the more you write, the more muscle memory you get. Um, that, mm -hmm. That's actually very good advice, uh, Tatiana. So uh, thanks for that as well. Now, um, very direct sort of questions in terms of your personal experience as well. Um, uh, did you did you follow the LLB specifically with the University of London uh, on the graduate entry or the standard entry route? Standard entry. Standard route. entry. So it was it was a standard entry. Perfect. So mm -hmm. from all of the subjects then that you faced, um, what was the most challenging, the most demanding subject, and why? Uh, <laughs> you know, I I didn't divide the subject to difficult and easy ones. When my tutors asked me, oh, you know. All, all students consider that trust is a very difficult subject. I told them they are all difficult for me. <laughs> they are all difficult, <laughs> really. Because you have to read, you have to, to make notes, you have to memorize things. Uh, the only thing, so, so basically, uh, they're all the same. Maybe property law is a mm. bit more complicated, but there is a beauty in this subject that the base that you study in the beginning, registered and unregistered uh, system, it, it goes through all other topics. And so you repeat it every every year, to every next topic. It's not totally new. You. you repeat it every time. And I liked it because you memorize it better and better every time. Uh, but what can be tricky is how the examiners shaped uh, shape the questions. Yeah. For example, in trust, it wasn't it wasn't difficult for me because the questions were quite simple. They were predictable. Uh, the examiners fo followed the same route as they as they did in previous years. The uh, topics were the same. The questions were the same. The legal issues they raised were the same. So you basically see the questions and understand. Oh, I know what it is about. It was. Two years ago, three years ago, it was the same. But sometimes uh, the examiners start changing the exam papers and uh, they add new topics they, that had not been tested before or they change the combination of topics. Right. And sometimes, yeah, you see the question and you know the topic, but it is firstly raised in this exam and you don't know what they expected from you, and this can be tricky. So for this reason, I would advise to study five, six topics at least to have an extra topic for so you to, to ask. To have somewhat of a strategy in place. And that's a good yes. segue as well onto um, something that I think will be useful to um, new students as well, which is um, obviously, you had a purpose in which you did the LLB for. So you wanted to enhance your knowledge, you wanted to supplement it, and you wanted to look at a more international perspective and maybe a chamber that will provide uh, that sort of experience later. Um, what were the optionals or what were the elective subjects that you selected and why did you do so? Um, since I'm practicing, uh, practicing law in Russia and my my particular areas of my interest is commercial law, contract law, company law, so I chose those subjects too. But one subject which I chose was fa family law, mm. and it is quite unusual. Uh, I chose it because I was interested in it, in it personally. I was interested in how, because I was impressed how, uh, how English lawyers, English lawyers, attention to social issues and mm. their attitude to social issues and I wanted to know how they regulate some uh, issues in this area and I was uh, I don't regret I chose it though it's not my uh, the sphere of my interest my professional interest right now but I was really impressed because 
we don't have anything <laughs> in Russia like they do. It's just, you know, it's just everything was black and white. And now then I saw a rainbow. It was like that. <laughs> yeah. that that's, that's, a ni- that's a quite nice analogy. Everything was black and white and it seemed like a rainbow. That's, I, I, think, I, yeah. think, I think most students tend to, um, tend to get overwhelmed with the optional subjects because they feel like the selection should be either very easy so that they can get through most people don't really select subjects based on a career trajectory. You've done so um, in that significant way. So job well done there. Um, okay, so one final question, something to round off. And I think just to provide some insight and maybe a bit of motivation as well to a student who's thinking of coming. Um, any words or any parting words of wisdom for a potential student just finishing school, maybe thinking of pursuing a particular career, um, hasn't decided yet, um, any advice at all of anyone who's considering doing an LLB and or law? Mm-hmm. Just if you're seriously think of following this path, ask some practicing lawyers what they like and don't like about their job. Then be prepared that it is quite a tough pr- profession and you will have to work a lot. And if you decide that it is your goal, then patiently follow it. And remember that sometimes our goals may change in our life. And if they change, it is not bad to follow a different route because it's better to do what you want to do rather than to do what you're expected to do. So (laughs) that's 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 a wonderful advice though. Uh, Follow what you want to do and not what others or the world or society yeah, might expect exactly, you to do exactly, um, exactly. thank you ever so much Tatiana um, thank you for spending some time with us and um, it's always wonderful when um, not just a student that has aced the exam but someone who's busy and who's in the profession as well has taken her time out to um, assist potential students and anyone who's watching uh, these sort of anyone who's trying to sit for examinations as well um, so on behalf of my audience thank you very much I, I know that it's Um, They would appreciate as well um, all the insight that you've provided. And thank you very much to the audience for joining us as well. Um, So until the next time that we meet, have fun, stay safe, and as always, obey the law. Thanks a lot for watching this video. If you would like to take your grade from a pass to an ace, make sure you get in touch through the links in the description below.